You're working with people and you can sit there and you can say, why are you behaving this way? You know, you were abused when you were a kid and all that stuff, why? And at the same time, you hear yourself on another level saying, what the fuck are they talking about? They must be really nuts, man. Why don't they just drop that shit? You hear the second voice going there. And therapists are not supposed to project or transfer their feelings onto their patients. It's called counter-transference. It comes when Freud tried to put psychoanalysis into a psychi uh, scientific model. He didn't want the therapist to contaminate the process. He wanted the experiment to be clean. So therapists were not allowed to lay their trips. And that was called counter-transference. The therapist had to go to another therapist and get his ass straightened out and then go back and work with you. This was classic psychoanalysis. And that was a pretty well model that was kept going for a long time. Therapists are not allowed to project, transfer their own feelings because you contaminate the process. It's not clean. The person is getting caught up with your trips, not just looking at who they are. I encourage our therapists to be human beings, to say what they feel. And that's very important because if not, you feel like you're not, they're no longer human beings. There's some clean test tubes that are giving you clean information without their trips. I mentioned this in Japan. I was my first therapist. I was 14 years old in a hospital, psychiatric hospital. I'm a teenage drug addict, scared to death. I'm called young blood by everybody because I'm 14 years old. Everybody else is until 19. I go to this therapist and I see her, I think it was around three times a week, sometimes once a week, depending on her schedule. I'm 14 and I turned 15 in this hospital. And I wanted to say to me, happy birthday, because I was in love with her. I had nobody else to be in love with, I just was in love with her, she was just beautiful. And I'm sitting there and throughout the whole session I'm not saying anything and she's just skirting around, skirting around. And at the end of the session, I said, it's my birthday. And she was writing in her book, and she looked up and she says, oh, happy birthday, and she kept writing. I'll never forget that. I was shattered. I, I thought I wasn't a person, I was some number in a psychiatric manual where she had to fulfill her caseload and put comments down. But I wasn't a person. I insist that they tell you how they feel and what they want from you. That's what I needed then, and I didn't get it. You know? For 14 years, I learned how to play the psychiatric game. Whichever therapist I went to, psychologist, social worker, occupational therapist, psychiatrist, I had a game for them, and they all would buy it. I would feed them exactly what they wanted to hear. It's very special to have not only therapists, but human beings behind. They get hurt. They feel fucked up about your behavior. They don't like what the fuck you're doing, you know? They're not just saying, why are you fucked up? They become a part of you, too. They're not just treating you. Their heart is connected with your heart kind of idea. I prefer this approach. and everybody who does trainings here know that this is our way. Very human, I love it. We lay our trips. You lay your trip, fuck, we lay our trips. I mean, throw away the labels, we're not therapists and you're not groupies, what are we? We're just a group of people hanging out together. but I'm in charge, <laughs> and I like the power.